So Sharif Khalid, head of IR of CIB, uh, it's such a pleasure to have you um, uh, here and for your time. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, congratulations on being ranked the first in the leading corporate um, IR category for the um, for Egypt in the Mira 2020 awards, and also achieving a third a position uh, in your sector for your IR program for the entire Emerging EMEA Executive Team Survey. So congratulations to all those successes and uh, um, give us your thoughts on what, what do those awards mean to you? For us, uh, this, is, this is obviously, it's a team effort. It's always going to be a team effort, um, but uh, um, the awards, um, and being recognized in, uh, in Mira is uh, generally something that uh, for our management and team is a testament to the fact that we are maintaining a good dialogue and a healthy dialogue with, uh, with our relevant stakeholders. Um, the fact that it is um, an, an award that is unsolicited, um, it is basically um, votes and people uh, telling us that we are effectively doing a good job especially in the circumstances and the markets that we operate in. Um, so um, it, is, it is definitely something that we take immense pride in uh, as a team, as a management. Um, it gives us, it's, it's effectively our customer's voice, if you will. It tells us that we are, we're mustering on, we're doing our jobs and um, we're, doing, we're doing it well. Um, but tell us, how did the uh, pandemic change your investor relations uh, work or strategy? And, and can you share with us some specific measures that you have actually taken to engage with, with your investor audience? In our case, uh, we, uh, we've done all of our precautions and we have 50% capacity in, in offices, 50% working remotely. In some departments where we are able to, we have 70% uh, of our colleagues are working remotely uh, and only 30% are working into uh, the office. Uh, the travel limitations um, have put a new perspective on, uh, on how we're going to communicate because for us as an institution and coming from um, a country where we have had several crises that we needed to adapt to, um, the one thing that is uh, constant is uh, maintaining that dialogue and continuing to speak, even if you don't have all the answers. And one of the things that um, is so true about COVID is we don't have all the answers. I just did a board presentation last week, so I have, I have the number with me. Um, over the course of the last uh, maybe 40 days, the investor relations team has had about um, almost 100 uh, uh, meetings and virtual meetings and calls and webinars and, and seminars and investor days and <laughs> everything. Um, and um, it's, it's, it's the tail end of the year. Um, we're closing in on the year and people are asking, investors are asking about performances and uh, the outlook and going into 20, uh, 2021. Um, they want to know how did the bank handle their uh, the COVID situation? How are we dealing with our employees? The need for information continues to be there. Um, investors still allocate um, funds in, uh, in Egyptian equities in emerging market. What changed for us as a dynamic is perhaps our working hours have been extended because people are working from home. Uh, they still want to maintain that dialogue. And the fact that you no longer meet face-to-face -face in conferences where you are sitting for eight hours and seeing 50 or 60 or 70 investors coming into your room, you need to do it in, in virtual meetings in batches of maybe four and fives. Uh, takes, it takes a little bit longer time and you need to make yourself a little bit more flexible with, with picking up your mobile. How are you incorporating ESG into your IR program, communication, and, and, and also in terms of your reporting? How, 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 how well is that already incorporated? Um, for us, uh, like I said earlier, because because of the nature of, of our shareholder base and how wide our shareholder base is, um, so we are a little bit more um, 
by virtue of the fact that we sit with these investors and this is becoming something that's relatively high on investors' agendas when reaching an investment decision, um, having ESG and having specific reporting on ESG. Um, so it ranks very, very high in CIB. It has always ranked very high in CIB. Uh, we have a uh, dedicated uh, page on our website for all of our um, ESG, we make sure that it is easily accessible. We maintain a dialogue with um, with investors that have um, ESG high on their agendas, and usually those investors will have um, specific questions about our ESG programs, um, about uh, policies, uh, governance issues, um, uh, if there are any gaps or any grievances or whistleblowing policies, et cetera. There, there are certain aspects that, um, that they look for and they, they want to ensure are ingrained and are embedded in the institutions that they invest in. Um, and we make sure that uh, we have those we inform. A lot of companies already have policies and procedures in place especially whistleblowing. This is one of the things that we learned um, uh, over the course of, uh, of the last few years that we might have a lot, meet a lot of the criteria um, and have a lot of strides in, in, uh, in ESG, but we just do not put it out there or make it as visible or inform as much. Um, and it's a learning curve in the sense that although we have everything in place, um, it's, it's that dialogue and because it ranks so much higher now in some other institutional investors' agendas that um, it makes it more visible. Uh, but there are regulatory changes that happened in Egypt that address some governance issues. Uh, for example, uh, I know that there is a law that has been passed for all listed companies uh, to have uh, female representation on their boards. Uh, and this is something that is, uh, uh, although a, a fantastic step, um, it is something that has existed um, in CIB for several several years now. Being able to navigate and reaching this information electronically and on your website is very, very important, but also making sure that you are putting the subject matter expert front and center and not shying them away is also something that is very important. So we have a chief sustainability officer uh, that manages um, that entire area, including the governance, including the, um, the, the, uh, the as other environmental and social aspects within the organization. And they speak directly with the fund managers that are keen on discussing the subject matter. Um, so they are an extended part of the investor relations team, if you will. You, you mentioned earlier as well that you were um, giving a presentation to the board. Now we see in our statistics that about 35% um, of heads of IR actually have access um, to the board um, and that is in, in Europe. So it's still quite um, a, a small number in terms of um, having that a seat at the table and engaging with board um, and informing them about what the market is saying. So how, how important is that process um, internally for you for CIB and how important is actually um, C-suite, your management uh, as part of the um, IR function and uh, engagement? There are two, two aspects here. Um, in, in, in CIB's case, for example, um, our, our, um, our head, real head of the IR program or the one who initiated the IR program in CIB um, is the chief executive officer. Um, and he's also a board member. Um, and this is very, very important for two reasons. Um, one, it gives um, significant weight when we are in a stage where we're building a rapport or we're in a stage where we're meeting investors um, for the first time, or even meeting investors the second or third time. Uh, at the end of the day, taking the management and putting them uh, front facing with the investors serves several purposes. One, it gives the investor 
um, access to effectively the decision makers and the strategists, the people who come and set the strategy. But two, it gives the C-suite um, direct idea of what the market is expecting from them. So our jobs as investor relations officers at its core is managing the perception gaps between the managements and boards and the stakeholders. Um, we could be the best storytellers, uh, the best, most transparent um, um, officers and, and telling them the bad before the good, but the ones that are driving, the captains of the ship, if they do not ever meet um, the investors, you lose out a lot. You lose out in the, in the trust that you build with the investor. And you lose out in an opportunity to get the investors to tell the management about the perception gap. How wide is it becoming or how small is it and efficient it is? Um, and, and this is effectively the market is, people always say the markets are always uh, ahead of everyone else, ahead of the media, ahead of, uh, the market always knows um, slightly ahead of everyone else what's coming. It tends to be that way. Um, whether you agree or not is, is, is a different story, but it, effectively the market has a tendency to better reflect um, that gap, that perception gap. And it, effect, it, it affects it in the price of, of the equity that are being traded. Um, and when the market participants tell the management we expect to see this type of growth, or we expect to see uh, this type of approach, or we expect to see this level of investment in uh, uh, one, two, and three. They are effectively telling them how to increase their value um, in the market. And it's, it's hearing it firsthand, unobstructed, um, gives so much importance. And, and um, I think this is what makes uh, our IR program um, what it is, is the fact that our CEO it puts himself out there all the time. He does maybe 75% of, of, uh, of meetings um, and calls, and he's always, he always makes himself available. Um, and, and it's very, it's very, very important for us. Um, and this is, I think what, what builds, uh, the transparency. I mean, we were, we were talking how we are in the most volatile region in the world. Um, and there are a lot of factors that are unknowns. Uh, we came out from, um, an Arab spring, uh, uh, just a decade ago. Uh, there were so many unknowns but it was very important for us to be the first listed equity in Egypt in the middle of the lockdowns to host the first conference call attended by 200 or more investors. Um, and the bulk of the conversation, this was done by the CEO and the IR team. And the conversation was more, guys, we, are, we don't have anything to say right now. We don't know. There's a lot of things that are unknown. But we just wanted to call and tell you we're 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 fine. We're here, consistent uh, messaging, consistent availability, um, and giving the investors access to the C-suite is very very important. In my case, uh, in the bank, our board is um, non-executive. However, um, it is very important for them as well to know what the market is expecting because when the CEO goes in and presents their strategy, taking into account what the market is expecting, um, it helps when they understand where they are coming from as well. I give a board presentation uh, quarterly uh, to the governance committee. Um, and the, the fact remains that our CEO is a board member uh, as well. So he gives an update in every board meeting. 
one of the areas that we're actually measuring um, is the credibility, leadership, and communication of the CEO as well as part of the survey. Um, and uh, your CEO has also done very well uh, across those attributes. You will probably be one of the few, um, I would say almost like a, out of a handful of people uh, in the regions uh, that have been actually doing IR for uh, as long as you have, um, over 12 years. Uh, um, what, are, what are your top tips and top tools, in fact? Um, well, I mean, I always perceive um, investor relations as um, a specialized generalist. <laughs> Um, and, and this is the approach that, um, I would advise anyone who's looking into, um, into investor relations, they need to have, um, the mindset of a generalist in their, in their, in their company, in their field, because you have to have a very, very broad, um, range of, of, um, uh, of knowledge of the company that you operate in, uh, but also the external factors that could potentially affect um, uh, how you operate. But one of the things that I learned over the course of the years um, is that um, consistency in, in doing investor relations and repetitiveness is, is one of the things that helps a lot in developing your skill set. Um, I always found that it's one of those industries that the longer I spend time in it, um, I feel I grow with it. Um, I become more efficient uh, at doing it. It's not one of those industries where I would feel that, oh, I have learned everything. I mean, in the, over, the, over the last, if we take the 12 years, uh, well, we, we went through um, the global financial crisis. We went through Arab Spring. Egypt went through multiple revolutions. <laughs> uh, we went through a flotation of the currency. <laughs> Flexibility and um, patience is key. And I continue to learn so much in uh, Daily, I continue to learn from my colleagues in the field daily, um, from my team, uh, from colleagues in other industries. One of the things uh, that we we have is is uh, a very good community where we talk, we communicate with each other um, about our economy, about certain decisions that are being taken, about the regulatory environment, about outlook. And uh, I hear of that uh, WhatsApp group, the Pharaohs, that um, that also yes. has a lot of support uh, as part of your uh, Egyptian IR network, which I think is fantastic as well. Um, I think uh, I just have a couple of more questions. Our quick round question, is, if I may, Shadif. Um, name a historical figure you would like to meet and uh, what would you ask them and, and why, why would you choose to meet this person? <laughs> uh well um historical figure I, I would i would love to meet is is uh, actually uh moses <laughs> um and um moses is is, is um, uh, i think well known enough in, in a lot of uh, a lot of books and history books and religious books um and uh, there are a lot of questions that i would ask but um but some revolve around um choices and on what grounds would you choose to uh, to walk away from a palace um, and a fairly comfortable life um, and pursue something completely opposite the drivers behind that it's uh, this is this is uh, I mean <laughs> this is someone I would want to ask it the last book that you read or still reading um, a, a last book, uh, I'm still reading, reading the Bible. Last book I read is a book called The Story uh, by Max Lucado. Uh, and it's also, uh, it's, it's also the story, it's, it's the Bible in the form of uh, a story. Uh, okay. That's, that's, uh, those are the books that I'm reading. 
Sharif Khalil, um, head of IR for CIB, thank you so much for your time. It, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for sharing your insights and your, your experience uh, and imparting some um, wisdom uh, onto, onto the IR community. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zolmine. Thank you so much for having me.